We are in Unit 8. This is Notes 4. And today we are going to take a look at what are called logistic differential equations. Okay? Keep in mind that this is logistic. It's not logarithmic. It's logistic. Um, think of logic. Okay? These are all going to be logical differential equations. All right? So, we, t we have been talking about, in our last section, we started taking a look at growth and decay differential equations. And we took a look at this main equation, this main differential equation, where the rate depended on the amount present. And that describes, like I said yesterday, that describes a lot of growth and decay problems. Okay? Solving for P yields this equation. And this is an exponential growth equation if k is positive. It's an exponential decay problem um, equation if k is negative. All right. So if we if p represents the pop, a population, it's likely that um, that the, the the population is growing. Right. So. It continues to grow if k is positive forever, given this equation. So the limit, as time goes to infinity, the population would go to infinity, right? That's an exponential growth equation. But in reality, of course, the population rarely continues forever. There is always some maximum possible size due to various reasons, okay? That's where, why we have logistic growth equations. They include a limiting factor within the equation. All right. So I'd like to begin this by looking at a logical graph of what would happen. All right. So I'm going to take a look at a graph. So on my y-axis, this is going to be my population. Okay, that's my population. And here's my time. All right? So in general, our graph is population versus time. All right? Now, in a logistic differential equation, we have a long-term behavior. We have a what is called a carrying capacity or long-term behavior. And it is an, a horizontal asymptote. So as time goes to infinity, the population will naturally go to that value. I'm going to call this L for limit. Okay? So this will be the limit as time goes to infinity of our population. And I'm saying that that's L. All right? Now, if our initial population begins quite low, Think about that. If our initial population, let's think of like a population of fish in a pond. All right. Maybe it's a new pond and we start off with about, oh, 20 fish. It's going to take a little time. It's not going to grow like really fast. Those 20 fish are going to take a little time to get growing, right? So it, the growth begins positive, but a little flatter, right? And then at some point we get going and the growth gets really fast. The growth gets really fast. But then we're starting to get closer to the carrying capacity of that pond. The pond is starting to feel a little bit snug, so the growth rate begins to slow down, begins to slow down. And it makes sense that that would happen. It slows down until we reach that carrying capacity. Theoretically, by the equation, it will never reach the carrying capacity. All right. We know in reality that it's possible to go a little bit above and a little bit above below. But according to the equation, this will be the graph. All right. This value right here is an important one. That is 
that is the population when the rate is increasing the fastest, right? So that's an important um, value. And we are, I'm going to show you that that population right here, it doesn't matter what the, dif the logistic differential equation is, that population is always half of your L value, always. It doesn't matter where you start, as long as you start below that half of L, this, this inflection point is always going to be half of L. All right? So that would be if your initial population, I'm going to call this P naught, P, sub zero, P of zero, P at time zero, the P naught, all right, is below half of L. What if P naught is above half of L? Well, if P naught is above half of L, then we're putting in, think back to those fish, we're putting in an amount of fish that's already made this pond a little bit snug. So there's not going to be a huge growth rate. This is just going to have a growth rate. It's positive until it reaches that carrying capacity, but then it just does that. So this curve is always concave down, always concave down right there. So that would be if P naught was between the, the carrying capacity and half of that carrying capacity. Now we have another situation. What if we have this tiny pond and somebody dumps a whole bunch of fish in it? More than the pond can handle. What if this is our P naught? What's going to happen to the number of fish? What's going to happen to the population? The pond cannot sustain that many. So the population is going to decrease, isn't it? It's going to decrease until it reaches that carrying capacity. Okay. Theoretically, it will never go below that carrying capacity. In reality, it might dip down a little bit, but it's going to be pretty close to that L value. All right. So notice, in all three cases, in all three possibilities, the limit stayed the same. The limit as time goes to infinity stayed the same. It was at L value. All right? This graph is going to describe every logistic differential equation. All right? So it's a good one to keep in your head. And it makes sense. It makes sense. All right. Now let's go back to your notes. I'll tell you what, before we go to your notes, I'd like to show you some real slope fields from logistic differential equations. Um, this first slope field is from this. This is an example of a logistic differential equation. All right. So let's take a look at this. In this, in this slope field, what is that L value? What is the limiting value? What is the limit as time goes to infinity? Well, clearly here, that limit is 4. So 4 is our limit as time goes to infinity. So that means that half of 4, this 2, must be my inflection point if my curve starts below 2. So let's come and just draw a little solution curve through, through the slope field. And we're going to be starting at 0.5. So it looks like we start at this slope, and then here we're at this slope, here we're at this slope, here we're at this slope, and then this slope starts to go down a little bit, and then we're close to 
it'll never cross that line. So something like that. I made it a little bit smoother. But you can kind of see that point of inflection right there. If the curve starts up here, then there's our solution curve. If the solution begins up here, then our solution curve does this. Okay? So that was this example of a logistic differential equation. Here's another one. Here's another one. Okay, so there's the equation. Here is our curve. Here's our slope field, sorry. What, where's the limiting value? Oh, by the way, here. The limiting value was 4. Look at the equation. Look right there. Okay. Here's another slope field. What's the limiting value? Can you see the horizontal asymptote? It looks like it's right at 100, doesn't it? So that's the limiting value. Look at our differential equation. Okay. So the curve, I could draw the solution curves again through here. It starts off pretty flat. This one, it's harder to see, but somewhere in here, well, not somewhere, right at population of 50, we'd have our point of inflection. Here we have there, and here we have that. So, yeah, you can see different solution curves going through there. Okay, this last little example. Okay, last little example, where's the long-term behavior, where's the horizontal asymptote? Right at 1, and sure enough, there's our L. L is 1. Okay. So I just wanted you to see some real slope fields of different situations, different logistic differential equations, and I wanted you to take a look at the, the format, the what a logistic different, what, what's in common with all three of these. In all three of them, we have some, well, we have dp dt, and we have some number out in front times p, and then we have our limit minus p, right? We're going to call this k. That number is going to be k. And so this is going to be the form of our logistic differential equation. Okay? All right. A lot of talk to introduce this, but I think it's worthwhile. I, th I want you guys to be able to recognize a logistic differential equation. Okay? So here is the form of our logistic differential equation. You need to be able to recognize it. Okay? See this P right here? There has got to be a, another P here and another P here. All right? I have seen plenty of AP multiple choice questions where they give you four choices and they say just which is logistic? And usually what they do is they'll put like a T here or a T here or whatever. They'll, they'll vary that up. Whatever is here, it has to be here and here. Okay? So be able to recognize that logistic form. All right, L is the carrying capacity. All right, it's also called the limiting value or just the limit. All right, now if we took this and solved it for P, because we could do that, we could divide both sides by P times L minus P, we would need to use a technique for solving a differential equation for integrating that not for solving a differential equation but for integrating that you haven't learned yet. We're going to, we would um, use a process called um, partial fractions decomposition. We will do that next unit. All right. So to solve this 4P I would need to show you how to do that and I don't want to do that yet. So all I'm going to do is give you 
the answer that I need you to know. So if you solve this for P, you get this equation. All right. If you solve this for P, you get this. If you solve this for P, you get this as your answer. Now I know that this looks complicated, but I need you to memorize this. Here's how I remember it. Okay. L is on top. It's crucial to every logistic differential equation problem. L is on top and it stands alone. It's by itself. Okay. On the bottom, I have 1 plus. And then the way I remember this is Celtic. Can you see the Celtic? I see the Celtic and that's how I remember it. 1 plus Celtic on the bottom. The C here is always L minus P naught over P naught. L minus P naught over P naught. So you get two P naughts there. That's how I remember that one too. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. All right. Number one. Consider a fish pond for which the rate of population growth is modeled by the differential equation this, where t is measured in years. Okay, is the given differential equation logistic? Can we write this differential equation in this form? Is it possible? Well, let's try it. I'm going to come off to the side. Well, I'm going to come right here. So I have dp dt is equal to 3p minus p squared over 600. If I wanted to write it in this form, let me write this down here. I would like, this is the form where we can get all the information from it. To write it in this form, I've got to have a plain p here. Right now, I've got p squared over 600. I can factor a p out, can't I? Let's factor a p out. If I factor a p out, I'll have that. I'm closer, but now I need to get this coefficient to be a negative 1, and now it's a negative 1 over 600. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1 over 6, or not a negative, I'm going to factor out a 1 over 600. So I'm factoring out 1 over 600. When you factor out 1 over 600 from 3, remember you're dividing. 3 divided by 1 over 600. 3 divided by 1 over 600 is 1800. And now we made it into that form. So your first step is always going to be making sure that you have the form that you can get information from, namely the L and the K. You need those values. So if the differential equation is, so the answer here is yes. If the differential equation is logistic, find L and K. L is always this number right here. K is always the p coefficient on the outside, so 1 over 600. Okay. Part C, what is the carrying capacity or end behavior for this situation? Well, the carrying capacity is L, right? So you can, the answer here is just 1800 fish. So that's going to be, if we were going to graph this, that would be our horizontal asymptote. Okay. Part D, what is the rate of change? What is the rate of change of the population when the population is 600? Okay. Rate of change, that's our dpdt. So they're asking what is dpdt when the population is 600? 
We just have to plug in 600 for P. You can plug it in here, or you can plug it in here. It's probably going to be easier to plug it in there. So if we plug in 600 for P, this would be a safe stop spot. But that cancels to 1. 1,800 minus 600 is 1,200. What would the units be? What would be the units? It's dp dt, right? Fish per year. They didn't ask for units, so I wouldn't give it to them. But we're just learning. So if they had asked for units, fish per year, because that's dp dt. Okay? All right. Next question. Given that the initial population is 500, find the limit as time goes to infinity. Okay, I'm going to write our equation back up here. Our equation was dp dt is equal to 1 over 600p times 1800 minus p. That was our equation. So what is the limit as time goes to infinity? Ah, sorry about that. I got pulled away for a moment. All right. Um, so in number two here, we, we're given that P naught is 500 fish. Keep in mind that our limit is 1800. All right. So it's going to be absolutely the most helpful if you begin this by sketching the curve. Now, I have, I have you do that way down here in part F, but you know that's that's fine. Let's just go down to part F and do that. Let's let's sketch the curve here. All right. Let's sketch the curve. Remember, this is our population, so this is fish. This is time. Okay. Now, go to your limit and draw that. Our limit is 1800, so draw that as the horizontal asymptote. That's our long-term behavior, right? Here, P naught is 500 fish, okay? On your curve, always make a mark at half of the limit, because remember, that's an important part for us, okay? P naught is 500 in this problem. So P naught is below half of that limit, right? So we already know what this curve's going to look like. It's going to be concave up until it gets to 900, and then it's going to be concave down afterwards. We know it's going to do that, okay? Here's our point of inflection. If you know the, the sketch of the curve, you can answer all of these questions without doing a lick of work, you guys. All right? The alternative is to do all of the work involved. And that's fine. It's going to take you some time, though. So if you can sketch out this curve, you can use it to answer everything. Okay? So let's do that. All right. So. Find the limit as time goes to infinity. That's 1,800. What would the units be for that? Well, it's the units for P, which is population. So the units would be fish. All right. 1,800 fish. All right. What is the range of the solution curve? What is the range of it? Well, the range is the possible P values. What were the possible p-values of the solution curve? Well, here's p. The p-value started at 500 and go to 1800, but they never reach 1800, do they? So the range would be 500 to 1800 including the 500, not including the 1800. 
That's the range. For what values of P is the solution curve increasing and decreasing? Increasing and decreasing. Okay, here's your curve. For what values of P, remember on the solution curve, we don't have anything marked on time, do we? We don't know anything about the time. We only know things about the population, all right? So keep that in mind. All these questions are going to be P. What is the range? That's the P values. What is, when is P increasing, decreasing? For what values of P, blah, blah, blah. You know, does this, you know, these are all based on P, not T. If we, if we are asked anything about time, then we have to go use that Celtic formula. That's the only way we can get information about time, okay? All right, for what values of P is the solution curve increasing? Well, here's our curve. Do you agree that it's the curve is increasing the entire range? The curve is increasing on the entire range. Okay, so I would say P is increasing on 500 to 1800, okay? We want to justify, so why is that true? Since the slope is positive, right? Since P prime dP dt is greater than zero, okay? P is never decreasing. All right? Part D. Now, the other way that we could do this is to take dp dt, set it equal to zero. We have p is zero, p is 1800, make a number line, do a sign chart, and we would see that dp dt is always greater than zero on our on our range, okay? Part D, for what values of P is the solution curve concave up and concave down? Okay, well here's our curve. We are concave up from 500 to 900 for P, not for T, for P. And we are concave down from 900 to 1800. So P is concave up on 500 to 900 since, since why? Why is anything concave up? Since the second derivative, or you could say P double prime, is greater than zero there, okay? P is concave down on 900 to 1800, the rest of the range, since the second derivative is negative there. Okay. Now we answered this because we knew the curve. The, if we didn't know the curve, then we would have to take the second derivative implicitly set that equal to zero and do a sign chart. Okay, that's a lot of work. It's not that much work if you know the curve though, right? Does the solution curve have an inflection point? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. At P is equal to 900. I don't know the time. We don't know the time, but yes, it does. P is equal to 900, okay? What's our justification? Concavity changed there. Since the second derivative changes signs there. Okay? So all of your old justifications still hold true, of course. 
Those are not going to change. All right. Same differential equation, but now the initial population is a thousand fish above that half of L. Okay. Let's go down to part F again and sketch the graph. So 1800 stays the limit. 900 always needs, to, or half of L always needs to go on your graph, okay? It'll help you. But this time, the initial population is 1,000. So our initial population is right here. So our graph is going to look like that. Okay? Let's go answer the questions. What's the limit? Still 1,800. That's not going to change. What's the range? 1,000 to 1,800. Including 1,000, not including 1,800. For what values of P is the solution curve increasing or decreasing? Well, this solution curve is increasing for the entire range. So increasing on the entire range, 1,000 to 1,800. I'm really not concerned if you include that or not. It doesn't matter. All right? I certainly wouldn't include the 1,800, though. But I, you can include that or not. It doesn't matter. OK? Decreasing, never. For what values of P is the solution curve concave up or concave down? OK, well, this solution curve is always concave down. So concave up, never. Concave down, the entire range. I'm not going to include that. Concavity doesn't include that endpoint. Does the solution curve ha have an inflection point? No, it does not. Next situation, same differential equation. Now the population starts at 2,000 fish. Okay, let's come down and graph. 2,000 fish. Our limit, though, is still 1,800. So we're throwing in more fish than this pond can handle. So the population is going to decrease until it gets to 1,800, okay? What's the limit? 1,800. That will not change. What is the range? What is the range here? Well, the range is the possible p-values. So it starts at 1,800 but doesn't include it, and it goes to 2,000. So 1,800 to 2,000, including the 2,000, not the 1,800. Increasing, decreasing. This curve is never increasing. It's decreasing on the entire range. Okay. Concave up, concave down. Look at the concavity. What's the concavity? It's concave up, isn't it? Concave up on the entire range. Concave down, never. Inflection point? Nope. None. The only time you can have an inflection point is if your initial population is below half of that limit. Okay, number five. The rate at which flu spreads through a community is modeled by the logistic differential equation this, and how kind they were to go ahead and give it to us already in the form where we can see L and K. All right. Notice for all of the, all of the questions that we were asked in this previous example, 
we would never use the value of k at all. The only time you're going to use the value of k is when you're finding p using that Celtic equation. All right? All right. T is measured in days. P is the number of people with the flu. All right? Okay. What is the limit? Well, the limit as time goes to infinity of P of T is equal to, where is the limit? It's right there. It's equal to 3,000. I have seen AP questions where that's a multiple choice question. It's great because I know all of my students get that one. Okay, if P naught is fit, let's, okay, let's go ahead and draw, let's sketch the graph because it'll help us. It'll help us with this. So the limit is 3,000, okay. Half of the limit is 1,500, and we're starting at 50. We're starting at 50. So we're going to be concave up. I should have drawn my, asymptote, my horizontal asymptote here. Concave up till we get to some point, some time, and then concave down, right? Okay. If P naught is 50, find P as a function of T. So let's pull out, let's try to do it without looking at the equation. Let's write the formula. So P of T is equal to, this is your equation for P. It's a fraction. Remember what, remember what was on top? L. It's our limit. It's the most important thing to these differential equations, these logistic equations. On the bottom, 1 plus Celtic. C E to the negative L K T. Celtic. That's how I remember it. Where C is equal to L minus P naught over P naught, two P naughts. That's how I remember that one. So for us, C is 3,000 minus 50 divided by 50. And if we put that into our if we put that into our calculator, or we can do this by hand, um, this would be 59. Okay? So C is 59. So P of T will be 3,000 divided by 1 plus 59 e to the negative L times K, L times K. Well, 3,000 times 1 over 5,000 is 3 over 5. See that? So 3 over 5 T. And that's it. That's it. That is P as a function of T. It's not bad if you know the formula. Okay. All right, how many people have the flu on day two? Well, that's just P of two. So now, now that we know P, now we can find out some information what's going on in the T axis here, all right? P of two will be 3,000 divided by one plus 59 e to the negative three-fifths times two. And that is a safe stop spot. It just, it would be nice if we had a number, right? But that's a safe stop spot. This turns out to be 159 people. Okay. Part C. How long does it take until 2,400 people have contracted the flu? So for that, I want to put 2,400 in for P and solve for T. So let's do that. 2400 goes in for P. Okay, and we need to solve this for T. 
So a little algebra here. I'm going to multiply both sides by this denominator, and I'm going to divide both sides by that 2400, and we get 1 plus 59e to the negative 3 fifths t is equal to 3,000 divided by 2,400 is 30 over 24. 30 over 24 has a common, I guess just 2. So just 15 over 12. Oh, well, no, there was a 6 in there. Sorry, that's okay. All right. We could have left it 3,000 over 2,400. It doesn't matter. Subtract 1 from each side. Okay, if we subtract 1 from each side, 15 twelfths minus 12 twelfths is 3 twelfths, which is a fourth, right? And now divide both or multiply both sides by 1 over 59. Okay. L to both, I'm sorry, ln both sides, ln both sides. If we ln both sides, we get that. And now lastly, multiply both sides by a negative 5 thirds. Safe stop. Is this negative? Can time be negative? Is this a negative number? No, it's not a negative number because remember, ln of something less than 1 is going to be negative. So this is a negative times negative, which is a positive. Okay. This turns out to be 9.106 and our time unit is days. Okay, so we're good. How long until 5,000 have it? Never. Because the limit was 3,000. What does that mean? We didn't answer this. What does that mean in the context of the problem? 3,000 must be the number of people in this community, right? So there are not 5,000 people in the community. Okay. All right. Did I have any more examples or was that it? I think that was it. Okay. Very good. Okay. Nice, nice section. I, again, I, I find this stuff very interesting. Um, and I find it pretty easy. I hope you feel like it's pretty easy. It may have been good for me to have one more example like this, but you'll go and do some examples on your own, okay? And then you can ask me all the questions that you want, all right? Okay, have fun doing it. Go practice.